Dude. It's circus freaks everywhere, and I'm just wandering along with them, just to skip in my step. I just like I feel like I'm I feel like I belong, and I feel like I'm going to work and waving to people, you know, like it's instead of the postman and the butcher or whatever. It's, it's like Rose. the beginning of the Truman Show, <laughs> you know. But it's instead it's a fucking guy on stilts dressed as some sort of like monster. So you don't want people to know where the other show is, but no, where, tell them the people where they can see your wrestling show. Uh, sure, ten fifty. Uh, that's at eleven p.m. in the yurt. It's the final weekend, and this Monday is our extravaganza with all our favourite guests. So book early for that because it's always packed, always runs long, and is always a blast. And I'm on at six fifteen on the free fringe. It's listed in one of three places. Um, so we're coming to the end of the fringe now. How's your fringe festival been? It's been awesome. I don't want it to end. I must confess. Normally by now I'm like miserable and ready to go home, but it's I, I, the free fringe is an entirely different experience than the rest of the festival. Yeah, that's interesting. This is the first year you've done it as a free fringe. No, thing. two, two years now. Yep. Okay. Same place, same time as last year. Yeah. Um, and last year as well. well. The thing about it is, if you can get past the vanity, and that is actually an issue. Um, and people say like, "Oh, you're standing there asking for money at the end. That's so demeaning." And it's like, what up here isn't demeaning. You know what I find demeaning? Trying to sell myself to some motherfucker who I have no interest in entertaining. He definitely wouldn't like me. I wouldn't like him. And yet I've spent 20 grand to try and get him to come and sit down and be a grumpy, folded armored, armed prick. Um, fuck that. And once I um, got used to that idea uh, last year, I just had, I had more fun than I ever have. And then I go to work late at night doing what I'd probably be doing if I wasn't working anyway. Yeah. Of just, uh, that's what comedian Matt Kirshen said. He said he's managed to make a show out of what he'd be doing on his time off. And it's funny that uh, the longer you do this, uh, usually the thing, how you waste your time when you're a comedian is actually usually how you end up falling ass backwards into and it becomes a a real solid chunk of your income. And what was the turning point for you? Was there a certain moment where you're like, you know, I'm not going to do it like this anymore? You were saying about in your show, you mentioned that you know you did the Pleasants and you were low, you were miserable. You didn't. Enjoy. Oh no, I loved the Pleasants when I was there. Oh okay, you're right. No, I did one year at the uh, assembly rooms, the posh house. Right, okay. Not the um, stand assembly rooms either, but there was like a, a, a chandelier on the roof, and it was without a doubt the. Look, I'm not saying they're not educated. I'm not saying they're not well to do. But being comedically savvy and well educated are two entirely different things. Funny understands funny. You know, uh, yet, you know, you look at, like, say, a Bill Burr or a Louis C.K. audience or something like that. They're funny people. Some of them are well to do, some of them are along the, the, you know, but they are funny people. They understand funny. Whereas <clears throat> the kind of arty farty uh, Edinburgh Festival elite that come up here, they are comedically stupid. They really are dumb. They really are so slow. I've seen them, I think it was last year, Clive Anderson, who's a lawyer turned after dinner speaker, but he has the right accent and the right background and the right academia. And uh, he opened with, uh, I know what you're thinking. Uh, that William Hague has let himself go. And the whole room went, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, that's a fucking open micers joke. That's a joke that you use when you're on the open spot circuit when you don't know what you're doing. I know what you're thinking, blank, insert famous celebrity here who you look like, has really let himself go, or with AIDS, or you know what I mean. That's a formula that you do when you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And even the papers reported it as like the greatest wit alive. And I was like, no, wow, you guys don't know shit. This is embarrassing. For him and them. That's fair. <laughs> You're quite like a fringe fe uh, festival veteran now. There must be people that you know that come up every year that maybe don't get the big awards or something like that that you think people should see. If you had to recommend someone you think everyone should see when they come up here. Oh, Glenn Wool. It's, it's staggering that Glenn's never been recognised. really is. Because he's, you know, he's definitely a, a comics comic. Um, and, you know, hugely respected around the world. But... We are at a rather snooty, snobby arts festival, and he doesn't quite dress the right way, he doesn't have quite the right accent, and therefore doesn't necessarily get recognised for the intellect of his material. And you, you know what, down the free fringe, you wander down the cow gate, 
of a, I love the carnival. I, I've been here 25 years and it does remind me of my first fringe. Holy shit, what time is it? It's not yet, is it? Oh, we you got one minute before you said you'd have to go. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> I just realized I gotta go to work. <laughs> See? <laughs> See what I mean? It's so fucking laid back. Starts when I get there, motherfuckers.